The following interview was filmed under strict lockdown rules. Some of the content you may find shocking. Flat lie rule means illegitimate, not allowed on the throne. It may make you question your spiritual beliefs. The biggest secret in the Catholic Church is that there were two Jesuses. But the journalistic integrity of us presenting this in a truthful, non-biased way is very important to us. I hope you enjoy the show, and we'll see you for part two. March 2020. The coronavirus takes full effect in the United Kingdom, and 63 million people are forced into lockdown. London streets are quiet, but rumors about the royal family are ablaze. Civil unrest breaks out. No clear leadership. Seems like there's no hope. But what if there was a new king? A hidden king? After a restricted journey across Europe, we made it to the secret film location and we got prepared. We were all a bit nervous shooting what possibly could be the biggest story of the 21st century. So when he arrived, I thought I'd go straight in for the question that was on everyone's minds. You rolling? Yeah. Okay, take one. With this ascension to the throne and the current situation with the coronavirus, is this all tied in with this internal battle in the USA? Internal battles everywhere. It is the fulfillment of prophecy. The Jews have this prophecy where they have to destroy Europe before the Messiah comes. And Messiah just means someone whose earlier works are followed later. And all of these words have definitions like Lord, Christ, Messiah, Mashiach. Mashiach's born on a certain day during Rosh Hashanah after seven years of certain events, which just happened to be my birthday and the time of my birth, which makes me king of Israel. Now, Israel is supposed to be run by a temple, not a government. Mm -hmm. So in acknowledgement of me being Mashiach, Israel has not been able to form a government in the last 17 months. So is this all tied in with what you have to do as well? Absolutely, absolutely. And we've been working on this since 1988. I've been working on it since 1980. It's just a normal life. I grew up in New Zealand. Then when I was five and a half, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II's doctor, called Sergeant Surgeon, he came out to New Zealand, invited my father to share his sheep. And on Sunday, we went for cold meat sandwiches, sitting on my father's knee, and he said, why don't you take your son down to see King George VI's son in Rotorua? So I did that, and my father dropped me off. He was in there, then he left, and I had a private audience with King George VI's son. George Fitzratima, who was actually King George VII. And that was on the 10th of July, 1967. And at the same time, they changed the New Zealand currency from British pounds and pence to New Zealand dollars and cents. But they retained the old coin called a crown and kept it in yeah. New Zealand until 1971 in use, right? So they were, symbolically, they were saying that the crown is retained in New Zealand. Um, there were signs and symbols all the way through. So if we go back a bit, to the coins from the 23rd of April 1968, nine and a half months after my meeting with King George VI's son, natural biological son, the coins started to appear Elizabeth II Greg. And that went on, that was first on the 5p coin, actually before decimalization. And then it was last on the two pound coin on the 10th of June 1998. And that was 11,011 days apart. And 11 means the letter M, so it's spelled M0M. So something was starting to happen. I was being brought in and named and symbolized and labeled as royal. Greg speaks a lot about biblical prophecies, predictions, signs that have helped him on his journey. He's agreed to show us some of these signs today. This is 
is a prophecy marker. Uh, it's a stele. Uh, it's the disc stele and it was put up in June 2000 and it predicts the day that I would arrive pretty much within six days. And it shows the location uh, from Jerusalem and that location is 11 miles out. Okay. It's 2,222 miles to Jerusalem, and this says 2,211. And that 11 is a guide to rotate the disc mare 11 degrees, and then it's an exact match with the Sea of Galilee in the shape. And C, S E A, is homophonous with the Roman numeral C, which is 100. And the disc mare is exactly 100th the size of the Sea of Galilee. Wow, uh, you've worked all this out? I just came across it one day and saw it, and it predicted the, how old I would be when I noticed it. And um, it sh it, the coordinates on it are actually the coordinates of the Sizewell Nuclear Power Station. What? Which is 21 nautical miles away. So the code is to size this up well, it's nuclear. So I had a look at this, I had a look at the Dismere, I related it to the Sea of Galilee, and then they built a structure over the water, which is a floating platform, exactly where the apostles left on the Sea of Galilee. And it does a right angle, exactly where Jesus was standing on the water. It's, it's like, size this up while it's nuclear. So what is something like this doing in a rural village in the middle of nowhere? It's part of Christianity's oldest science called typology theology, which means that what happened then will happen in another place in some future time. And this stone, this stele, marks that future time and marks that location. And I'm going to show you just how involved that prophetic marking is. It's just unfolding like it's a glorious revolution and it's a bloodless coup and we're just getting rid of the old ways and the people doing the old, the things in the old ways and we're doing things in a new way, which is multi-dimensional from all angles, from all media. And um, it's just happening and we all know it's happening and not many people can put their finger on it and not many people know what the causations are. One of the causations is that the British royal family has been flat lie royal since 1840. Explain that. Flat lie royal means illegitimate, not allowed on the throne. So from the Battle of Waterloo, the British royal family lost all their money and they've been funded by the Rothschilds in exchange for breeding rights. So the Rothschilds had the breeding rights to the British royal family from 1819 to 2019. Oh. So what was the purpose of the Rothschilds needing this? The British royal family were virtually bankrupt from 1815. So the Rothschilds funded the British royal family in exchange for the Rothschilds breeding the royals. So the whole British royal family are Rothschild batards. And batard is the royal name for bastard. So what I did in my legal documents is I exposed King George V of England has been sired by Tsar Alexander III of Russia, and I expose Queen Elizabeth II as sired by artificial insemination by Winston Churchill, who was actually the illegitimate son of King Edward VII. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I know, it gets too much, it gets too much, so I'll show you a chart. Okay, so you've got it all laid out for us to see? Absolutely. Greg has produced a chart showing a surprisingly different narrative of the royal lineage we've all become accustomed to. So these legal documents that you've registered mm. and given to the British mm. royal family, you've also sent copy of these to various other world leaders? Uh, America, Russia, Israel, England, plus and the no Pope, Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury. And nobody contested these documents? Well, they've accepted them all by passive acquiescence and cognitive avoidance and they've put an estoppel in action on them, which means to stop due to the action, which is an admission. So the whole world has been acting on my documents, including the British royal family. They've acquiesced to my documents by removing their emblem off the Buckingham Palace gates and by doing a rex abscondus, and the Queen has gone into hiding 
in Windsor Castle for the purpose of supposedly the coronavirus. But the coronavirus actually means we crown him in Latin, right? The whole world's closed down for Lent, the Pope's abdicated, the Queen's abdicated, and I've been named in movies, I've named myself in the documents with these titles, given the reasons and the history of why I have these titles, and it's been accepted. So I'm now getting phone calls from and interviews with American generals accepting me and putting me in place. Wow. And the whole world is acting on it. And I'm people saying, hey, how excited are you? And I'm going, actually, I just, it just feels normal. It just feels, I've got no ego, super ego. It's, I'm just walking a path, you know? So you're just taking it all in your stride, really. You're just letting it all unfold. It's like I was imbued with it. I, I literally was. I was imbued with this. And I was successively trained with it about every two years, you know, so it wouldn't go into overload. And... Um, I've been publishing this stuff for the last 18 years. Um, it's in depth and it crosses all barriers and all. Greg. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. It's John. Okay, cheers, cheers, cheers. Hey. How are you? Doing? How are you? You're in the middle of filming. Yeah, quickly. I'm sorry, sorry. I just have to tell you something. I just don't During our time filming with Greg, there were several occasions where he received phone calls giving him vital intel drops about the ongoing worldwide situation. Um, what he's going to tell me, or what he just told me right now, is that um, he's going to close down all the accounts in the next couple of hours. Oh, fantastic, so, fantastic. Yeah, and he will for you. So that's pretty much the message for right now. Uh, that's all I want to say, very positive. Yeah. So we're on our way, boy. Yeah, we're yeah. We're, all doing, we're doing great, okay? but I just wanted to get you that message. All right? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right. That's brilliant. Right, Thank care. you. Thanks, John. The group. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. Sorry about that. Well, man, I mean, <laughs> it happens all the time. Huh? Like I get intel drops all the time. <laughs> and the world's ready now, and they just go. I understand. I understand symbols. I understand signs and symbols. I understand what he's doing, and I put it clearly in the legal documents, and that just spread like wildfire. I had. Uh, 170,000 document downloads in five days. Wow. You know, so we actually had to get a new server to cope with it, just that. Um, and they're realizing it's true, and the royals are acting on it, they've disappeared, Prince Andrew's disappeared, Prince Harry's disappeared. The documentation I've presented to the common law courts, Great Britain and International, includes the Certified Declaration of Queen Anne Boleyn's Royal Lineage and myself, Joseph Gregory Hallett. The Certified Declaration of Joseph Gregory Hallett, the Mashat Christ Messiah and King of England. Affidavit in support of Joseph Gregory Hallett declares the illegitimate conception of King George V, the United Kingdom. And the Statement of Claim and Support of myself, declaring the patent ambiguity of Queen Elizabeth II's royal styles and titles. I also have a letter from Queen Victoria dated 17th of March 1850 to include all of Ireland and it says assemble him claimant. It's the most valuable royal mark in the British Empire. It's such an incredible story but it's very difficult yeah. to put it in terms that most people can understand it. Well what's actually going to happen is the crown and the orb and the scepter and the sword are going to be left on the throne, the gates are going to be open, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to sit down on the chair, someone's going to put the crown on my head, take a photo and we're going to send that around the world and then we'll have a ceremony later. Wow. That's actually what's going to happen. It seems very I mean it's a, it's a total acquiescence right? Yeah. It's just total acquiescence. The whole British royal throne and crown of England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Britain, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and all Ireland, and all of the Commonwealth is just acquiescing. It's, it's fantastic. We're looking at the biggest coup in history because we've also got the acquiescence of the Catholic Church, right? And that's because I filled all, fulfilled all the predictions in the Bible. 
the Bible is actually a series of prophecies and predictions hidden inside a religion and the religion is there to keep the prophecies alive so that enough of the world's population will recognize the predictions when they happen. Which has become clouded now because most people have forgotten how to interpret these messages. Well what was interesting, they, they brought Paul in to undo Jesus' work in the Bible and that's quite well documented by leading academics but the bits they didn't understand in the Bible they left in and the bits they didn't understand was the predictions so the predictions the essence of it was left in there and there's also the book of predictions and the book of predictions was summarized in the Rosicrucian cosmography drawn by Sir Walter Raleigh and there's a key required for that Rosicrucian cosmography to show who is the silent Roman Emperor the King of the United Kingdom and then it was England and Great Britain um, and uh, I was given the key on the 10th of April 2014 this is the key this is the key and then I found out that Sir Walter Raleigh was my ancestor and um, when I finished these books it just tipped over from winter into summer season I was living 100 meters from the coast in the Algarve so I went down to Beneka, had a coffee and a beer, and I thought, where am I going to live, you know? So, and I just had this memory that I wanted to live in a cave in Europe, and it was like, it was warm enough. Yeah. So I just wandered for 45 minutes, found a cave, and um, they were building a walkway above it. So I got the offcuts, threw them down into the cave, created a level platform, and just slept on the ground, and then got an airbed, and then slept on that. Uh, I was there for about 123 days, but because of giant waves, coming up, hitting the 40 foot cliff face and going up another 50 feet. I, I didn't sleep there the entire time, so I slept there 100 days. And then I found out that Sir Walter Raleigh had also been to that cave and that he had drawn it, he'd sat in the cave and drawn the lion-shaped rock with Noah's Ark on top of it. I'm sitting in this cave, before I knew this, I'm sitting in this cave and I'm looking at this rock and then a replica of Sir Walter Raleigh's ship goes past and I capture a photo of it sitting on top of the lion's head, you know. And that's exactly what Sir Walter Raleigh drew. And he named me Joseph Gregory Hallett on the Rose Christian Cosmography. Draw two blank spaces in the top left, top right for exactly this, which is the royal mark of the Prince Regent Duke Governor, which means King to be. And um, that Rose Christian Cosmography was a summary of the Book of Predictions that was stored. 30 miles west, near uh, just north of Faro. So the Book of Predictions, was that a different layout, a different version of the Bible? Because Jesus, who held the title Christ, right, Christ is a title, because Jesus, who held the title Christ, he represented the end times New Age in his time, like kind of from the Old Testament to the New Testament, he had to predict who would next represent the end times New Age. So he wrote the Book of Predictions. So Walter Raleigh could speak and write in six languages. He got that during the Cadiz Faro raids, collecting books for the Oxford Library. And um, he kept that book of predictions to himself, interpreted it, and he said, go 30 miles west to an arch in the rock, it's 27 feet high, go through there, find the cave, which had been struck by plasma arcs from another planet, and sketch it, and write down these names, Joseph Gregory Hallett, and this is the next person to represent the end times new age. And I was actually living in that cave when I got the phone call from the Sangreal saying, the Priory de Sion, the top of the occult, have just selected us to represent the end times. And I'm hearing a slightly staticky phone because there's not a lot of reception in a cave. And uh, so that was great, we did that. And I found out all the dates and when the changeover was, and you know, to get right down to detail. So you knew it was gonna be 2020? No, this was 2014. Right, so. I was doing it, I was doing it. And it's, it, the way they mark 2014 in the Rosicrucian Cosmography is they have two little X's, it's 20, 20, and then they have a big vertical feather, it's the one, and then they've got another feather, one's in a four, and the other's in a seven, and that marked 2014, which is the seven year, yeah, two plus one plus four. And that started on the 7th of July, so it's 777. And that's the number for the end times new age. 
It's also the number for the shin, 21, and I've been running the shin since 1980. And the shin is the forbidden secret. And the forbidden secret is the British royal family are illegitimate and the biggest secret in the Catholic Church is that there were two Jesuses. Wow. Right, that's, that's, so I published the two Jesus story, volume four and five, and that's why the Catholic Church folded. I mean, this is a... I mean, it's, 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 it gets huge, it yeah. gets huge. And it took me three months, when I first found out there were two Jesus, it took me three months of cognitive dissonance to uh, even begin to accept it. Right. So they were from the same part of the world that... Yeah, they were third cousins. They're actually second cousins, but one generation apart. So if you imagine two generations of 30 years and three generations of 20 years, so they're the same age, second, third cousins. Okay, so this is my profile oak tree where I was photographed in 2016. And in 2017, on the 25th, 26th of July, a storm came through that was from the ground right up to the top of the sky, 200% moisture, and it's just traveling at about six miles an hour and toppled a tree in eye. And then it came through here and there's huge thunder, this huge Zeus-like thunder, but no lightning. And it came here and a thunderbolt of sound split a third of my profile oak tree off and it fell on the ground and produce, the leaves went gold and it produced a golden crown with 24 major branches on it, fulfilling the prophecy that 24 elders could, had, had seats. And what was left inside was a Jesus on the cross, the Passion of Christ, with two horses either side. And what came down on the ground was an Anubis-like figure, also with some horses in it. And this formed the four horses of the apocalypse. Now, when oak splits, it makes the sound apocalypse. And it is the color of the four horses of the apocalypse, black, red, pale, and white. So what happens here is we've got two horses remaining in the tree, either side of the passion of Christ. And we've got another two horses falling down. That's the four horses of the apocalypse. And the prediction was that a man with a very sharp axe who was three score and 20, that's 80 years old, would cut it down in hail and incense. And I just happened to be walking past on the 7th of December and asked him if he could cut out this Anubis shape, this horse shaped figure. And uh, he said, sure, come back tomorrow, 8th of December. And he had this massive, really sharp chainsaw and he cut out the Anubis figure for me and it was sleet and he was burning brushes, which was the incense and he was 80 years old. It was, it was just a fulfillment of prophecy. And when I filmed it, there was no clouds and this rainbow <laughs> appeared out of the sky and landed in the gravestone 100 meters that way. So I went and looked at the grave, gravestone. It said, Henry William Haylett. And that was also in the Bible prophecy. So Greg, if all of these prophecies we were talking about come true, how do you feel about all of this and what are you going to do? Well, I've been shock tested with humility all my life. I've been hungry for 12 days, I've had no salt for nine months, I've been blacklisted since I was 11. I haven't been allowed to work anywhere in the world for the last 13 years. So now that it's obvious that I'm fulfilling all the prophecies and the time's right, everyone's coming on board. like governments and generals and banks and this crew has just popped up it's just, it's just fantastic and nothing has been done for so long and we're now living in a non-reality like lockdown it's a total non-reality so i kind of have to do everything from the beginning which is good because that's what's expected because we're starting a new age and medicine doesn't work you know banking's not quite working mortgages 82.7 percent are incorrectly registered all land registries so the queen has failed in her regis status which is to register so it's just a whole new game from the beginning to end we're rewriting all the laws like Gisera and Nisera 
and banking and how we live and what our values are and what's actually good for the environment and how we build our houses and what medicine we use and what inventions we can access. A lot of suppressed inventions. But you're talking about the entire planet doing this? Hey, it's a whole new age. Like, it, the changeover has been happening since 2012, 2014, 2017 and now 2019, 20. It's like um, just an invisible, rolling, clear thunder from Zeus, you know, it's a, a boom, you know, and we're just in a whole new reality. The old reality is crumbling, absolutely crumbling. Everyone knows it's crumbling. Everyone knows it's a non-reality. Everyone's looking for the new reality and who the leaders of the new reality are. And that's uh, based on a fulfillment of prophecy, like Trump's got prophecies about him from those books. And I've got prophecies about me from uh, the Revelation last book of the Bible and that actually finished revelation was actually completed on the 30th 31st of May 2020 and then the next day on the 1st of June Donald Trump gets his Hebrides Bible and he walks out of the White House goes to 1525 St. John's Church holds his Bible up as the symbol that revelation had been completed and what it says is Christ I come quickly right and I've gone from 10 views a day to 15,000 a day, plus another 5,000 a day who can't access. So I've gone from 10 views a day to 20,000 views a day. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, the Pope said, people will hear him now. And that's exactly what's happened. Right? He gave permission for people to access my information and people are in lockdown, so they're looking for information and my website and my books and my legal documents are providing that information and we've got all sorts of lawyers and all sorts of historians trying to undo my information and we've got all the royal family and all their lawyers and all their historians trying to undo my information and they go no it's true <laughs> that's amazing if you could leave this interview and give one message send one message to the entire world what would that message be uh, we're doing it and be part of it and come along for the ride. It's happening. It's absolutely happening. It's a Ranga, the awakening. I've spent the past three days with Greg and the man's knowledge of history, biblical prophecy and royal lines is truly remarkable. I've seen it firsthand, the documentation including the letter from Queen Victoria. Now, whether Greg can achieve this monumental task, only time will tell. But what one thing is for sure, I feel that this is not the last time that we will hear this name, Joseph Gregory Hallett. <laughs>